Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unfuck Your Mind. I'm your host, Zach Lyotis. In today's podcast, I have the beautiful Katie Christie. She's a holistic healer, nutritionist, and has a BA in psychology. She loves to support you to feel as good as possible, making the journey of healthy living fun, easy, and delicious. Along with her nutrition and psychology degree, she has also studied Ayurveda, flower essences, herbal medicine, Reiki, and axiotonal alignment. She empowers you with holistic understanding and connection to your own inner guidance to heal yourself. You can experience health, beauty, and energy upgrades through her offerings of holistic healing sessions, cooking retreats, and health transformational packages. Welcome, Katie. Thank you, Zach, so much. Very Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to have you here because when I look at your Facebook post, I mean, I've been following you for a while. You crack me up. <laughs> and I was like, I need to have her on this podcast because she has such an awesome vibe to her. She totally makes love in her kitchen. She just totally is her divine feminine. She is this energy that exudes divinity to its finest. And I just want to say, I love every part of you when I watch this. I just, you put a smile on my face instantly. So thank you. I'm so glad. That is my intention is to, you know, make it fun and hilarious. And you're really good at that. (laughs) (laughs) Being natural. (laughs) Yeah, it's a natural thing that just comes from the divine. I get it. But you know what? I'm (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to talk about the kitchen thing later because I know that you love making love in this kitchen and I see, oh, yeah. actually let's talk about the kitchen now because that's what's coming up. So have you always been a kitchen woman that loves to express her emotion, her love for food in the kitchen? Or is this something that kind of <laughs> happened divine, divinely? Very good question. Cooking was my biggest fear. Oh. I didn't know how to cook, you know, I only knew how to make maybe like a salad and a bowl of cereal or like a boiled egg or something for up until, you know, all throughout university, basically. Wow. Yeah. Like I had no idea how to cook. And it's so interesting because now when you cook your food, you take a picture of it. I'm like, I want to hang out at her house with her. Everything (laughs) is so colorful. Everything is so plated so beautifully. Like, mm. I can actually feel the love that you put in your food through just your pictures alone. That's amazing. I'm so glad. Truly, I put a lot of love into it. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I don't want to eat <laughs> Just a bit of fun. Yeah, I know. Cooking, it used to be, I was so overwhelmed by it. And even, I, I even thought, how am I ever going to, you know, get married and be a wife someday? Like, I don't know how I'll cook for a family. I even, like, ended a relationship because I was it was my turn to have him over for dinner and I'm like oh god I don't know what to make so I just kind of ended it so like you, that's <laughs> that is hilarious like if that was me I'd like order take out and then I would put on a plate and be like I got it honey <laughs> yeah I considered that but then I'm like oh this feels like a lie let me just not deal with this obviously I'm more balanced now thank goodness but yeah. um at the time that was how I dealt with the situation <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious so what brought yeah. you into the kitchen like to do this amazing stuff that you produce every time I see it yeah so I started watching food documentaries like mm-hmm. food matters forks over knives uh food ink and I really realized like whoa food is actual medicine like yes. I I never it seems obvious because you know we're eating it three times a day it's our fuel it's our you know gasoline mm-hmm. but I just never it was just kind of an automatic thing. Like, you know, we put food on the plate and eat it. I never really thought about it. Mm. But when I saw these documentaries, it really hit me how vital it is and how much it can actually change your health, your vibration, your life. And then, you know, it's a snowball effect. Once you get into one thing and then you bring in more practices and it just unfolds beautifully. Yeah, it's true. I had to learn that food was medicine 22 years ago after cancer. Wow. I never would eat healthy. I was like that out, like eating out French fries, chicken fingers, chicken wings, burgers. Like yeah. that was me. Broccoli, cauliflower. Like everyone knows she's not going to eat that. Now mm-hmm. when I eat, like people are like, you're going to eat that whole head of cauliflower. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn right I am. 
Like, so yeah, it, it, it woke me up 22 years ago and it That's healed me through wow. cancer, it healed me through depression. It healed me yeah. through so many different ways. So food is thy medicine and medicine is thy food. And it's, wow. it saved you in so many ways. Didn't, uh, it, it showed you a good way of saving yourself too, by watching those documentaries. Definitely. And at that time I had just connected with my first Reiki master mm-hmm. and she actually was the one that told me an insight from my grandfather that I was to go to school for health and nutrition. Mm. And I, at the time I said, uh, yeah, no, definitely not. And then she's like, well, this is the insight I'm getting. Like you can do whatever you want with it, but like, this is what it is. Just look up programs and you'll find the one that's meant for you. And I honestly didn't believe her. I was like, I'm done with school. Like, that's not what I want to do at all. But then I was searching and I found the program and I, I was like, this exists. And then next thing you know, moved to Toronto. And it, I can't imagine not have done that. Like, thank God I got that insight. So, yeah. Where are you from originally? Uh, Winnipeg. And then I went to university at Western in London. Oh, so you're from Winterpeg. So you're used to this cold weather here that we're having. Uh, it doesn't mean I like it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're used to it. I didn't see, I see if you like it. <laughs> I stay warm with my with my heart and with my elixirs and my yummy food so I'm good yeah Yeah, they're good I know I I always visualize a beach before I go outside same I feel I'm on the beach when I'm walking out there like I'm radiating sunshine it's so funny because I I do that and my niece would say to me aren't you gonna put a coat on and I'm just like I'm fine I'm not even cold (laughs) and she's just like you're weird she'll always say to me you're weird so that's awesome. So you went to nutrition school and did you study like the whole spectrum of nutrition or was it like a cooking aspect of nutrition? Yeah. So the whole spectrum, but definitely mm-hmm. cooking was included with that. But, you know, as you're learning everything and figuring it all out, yeah. you, you know, I took some approaches that weren't so balanced because I didn't have the complete holistic intuitive understanding that I have now. Mm-hmm. And I actually ended up putting myself out of balance. Yeah. So I actually, in my journey of trying to heal myself and get better, you know, I ended up getting worse mm-hmm. because firstly, I wanted to, you know, save the whole world, you know, the light worker, that phase of when you're just want to spread love and light and put yourself on the back burner and everything. That was fun. Um, or uh, going way unbalanced, you know, following one particular diet that one person recommends that is not, you know, divine or holistic. And uh, that led to some serious health issues. And I was in the hospital and had acne all over my face, had no energy, couldn't digest anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, cellulite, like my whole body was just messed up. Wow. Mm-hmm. You had to bring yourself back into balance. Did, 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 so that was your learning. That was actually your learning curve right there, bringing yourself back into balance. For sure. And you know, sometimes you feel too strict yeah. and then in one direction and then you almost rebel against yourself and then self-sabotage the other direction. That's why I'm all about, you know, finding the balance and making it fun so that you don't feel the need to rebel against yourself. Because when yeah. you go too hard and too strict, you it's like the pendulum swings, right? Then you go the opposite direction. That's so very it's got to be natural. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. How long did it take you to get back into balance? Mm, hard to say. Yeah. You know, it was, yeah, I feel really good now. I feel solid. Yeah. It takes about 90 days, according to Herring's Law of Cure, when it comes to your body. I love that you say that because that's what my health transformation packages are 90 days. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is 90 days. 90 days. Herring's Law of Cure was the best thing that I ever read in my life mm. because it, I used to be a colon hydrotherapist, I did nutrition. Oh. I did personal training. So spirit brought me down this whole realm of mind, body, and soul. So I got to learn a lot. I was a dental assistant. So inside and outside everything. And uh, after dealing with cancer, I was just like, okay, like people were like, you're going to fight cancer. No one knew about this. And I'm like, I'm not fighting anything, man. I got to bring, I got to learn how to eat. That's I go, cancer taught me that I need to eat properly and not eat this dead food that I'm shoving down my throat. Wow. That's exactly what it was. It was, it was my transformation away from main street kind of eating 
and really eating the whole foods. And sadly enough, we're not getting the same nutrients in the foods these days because of all this Monsanto crap that's going on. You know, my parents used to grow our food. We, our food was in our garden in the summertime. So it's a whole different degree, especially because our soil now, then we have these chemtrails and people, these are things that people don't recognize that's happening to us. Mm -hmm. And then you have the pharmaceutical company that just wants to like, Throw some pills down your throat and you're you're saved somehow and it's, it's like no you're not you're gonna die much faster now because you're just a statistic on how that medication is going to work that's so, exactly it yeah i could get on that for, for hours, <laughs> as you can tell <laughs> that's my passion right it's just it's because i've been down that road i know how hard it is so yeah, really when you, when you went back to being in balance, I want to go back to that because a, a lot of people, I mean, half of the world's out of balance, period, mind, body, and soul. Yeah. Being a 30 day program. And I know a lot of things could change in 30 days. That's a beautiful program. I could feel it all right. So powerful, so potent, everything. When people go through their food eating, how do they deal with all the emotional stuff that comes up? Let's talk about that part. That's the fun part. Mm hmm. So ex clarify what you mean. So when, when someone's going through bringing themselves back into balance, mm -hmm. so introducing either new foods to them or food combinations to them, they're going to have some sort of an emotional uproar, regardless if it's self-confidence, regardless if it's a fear, um, just a mind blog. All here is like a total mind beep. Mm -hmm. you know? Beautiful. Yeah, definitely. So I really work with people where they're at and what they actually feel excited and inspired to implement. Mm. I'll never force anyone to do something that doesn't resonate with them. Yes. It's really, it's them that is doing it and I'm holding a space and inspiring them and giving them a boost and giving them the right information and tools. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if they're not ready to give up a certain food, fine. We don't need to focus on that this week. You know, we can bring in another area that will benefit their life. As you know, there's so many things you can do to uplift your health and your energy or make small changes here and there. So it's all about finding what is it that they actually want to do and feel excited about doing and doing it not because they have to, but because they want to. Yes. Like I get to do this because it feels good and I want to feel good. That's beautiful because so many people are on these fad diets. Like what's the latest one that everyone's on right now? The paleo, is that the one? Or the keto or? Yeah, all of it, yeah. I have no idea. You know what I tell people? Yeah. Eat the color that the world yeah. is giving to you and stop Just, with these crazy diets. I'm with you, my love. Yeah, I just eat real food. It's so simple, honestly. I like to just make it simple for people. And, you know, I don't count anything. No. That's, I don't see food as a number. I see it as beautiful nourishment and a gift from the earth. And I see, you know, the beauty and, and the energy that it's bringing us. And when you bless it and you eat it in a beautiful, mindful, making love to it kind of state, like <laughs> you're, you're going to get all the nutrients you need. Okay. Like you're good. That's awesome. No, I love it. I love, I love that you do the elimination when they're ready for it because at the end yeah. of the day, they're not realizing it, but it's going to end up off their list anyways. It's just that fear of letting it go because it's just like, yeah. habit, right? I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I don't want people to ever feel intimidated to come see me and thinking that I'm going to, you know, take away all their favorite foods or force them to do this and that because that's not at all how I work. Yeah. Um, it's a very loving, unconditional space. And I really truly see my client in their full potential. And I see it clearly like some steps that they can take, but it, at the end of the day, it's totally up to them if they feel ready for that then, or maybe, you know, maybe we get them making some changes to begin with. And then the next two weeks when we meet, they feel like they're ready for that then. Mm, that sounds so beautiful. Yep. And yeah. you don't have to go on these crazy fad diets and, and start on Monday. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love starting. When I'm doing something, it always starts on a Friday because I get okay. the out of the way. So if That's I'm doing like a cleanse or if I'm doing, because I've been called to do a lot of cleansing and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm going to start on Friday. My friends are like, why Friday? I'm like, but why Monday? <laughs> That's hilarious. Right? Yeah, like Friday. 
make it fun honestly it's you know because I was too strict that stressed me out way more yeah that that isolated me from social stuff and friends and family and it, it put me in a box yes I'm not yeah like I'm not interested in being in a box or putting any of my clients in boxes like you know be who you are do the best you can and there's always you know it's a step in the right direction right yeah and so, every step counts every step counts it truly does and it's so beautiful I love how you take the approach of it as just so it's, it feels like such a chill thing for you and it's just like yeah we're just flowing here. We're making love in the kitchen. We are just having a good old time because I always find this too when people are so strict on their so-called diets. Meanwhile, it's like a whole lifestyle. They quit before they even start. There we go. It's not sustainable. It's a whole, it's a mental game too. You don't realize it. Mind game. Like, life is supposed to be fun and joyful. Well, they have to watch your videos on Facebook because just those videos alone, you're going to bring them so much joy and fun. And I just love the way you dance in your kitchen. I just, I watch your videos and I just laugh. I'm like, this girl makes me howl. Like seriously, like, I just love her vibe. I just oh, love her vibe. So so yeah, thank you for that. I want to go into what is axitonial alignment for those that don't know. Yeah, so axitonial alignment, it basically works on the meridians. Mm -hmm. for the channels to open so that the soul can more freely and clearly express itself, mm -hmm. which is, you know, one of the foundational basics of all the work that I do really. It's, you mm -hmm. know, clearing the body so that the soul can, it's almost like a light bulb. If a light bulb is, you know, rust, like dirty and dusty on the outside, and then you, you know, wipe it off, the light comes through way clearer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like that even with, you know, journaling and meditation, you're clearing out your mind, you're cleaning mm -hmm. it out with eating foods that are pure, you're cleaning out your body so your soul can flow. And axiotonal alignment is another way of, you know, helping the soul flow easier. And when I experienced it, I almost, you know, in those deep healing sessions when you almost go somewhere and then you come back and you feel like you maybe like had an eight hour sleep or something and you came yeah. back and then I just felt like so many channels open and I felt so amazing and expansive and connected. I'm like, I need to learn this and do this for people. This is next level. Magical. So that's what inspired me. Yeah. And it's perfect because you deal with the food and now you're dealing with the energy of it. So as you're, as they're clearing their junk out from their bowels, I mean, I used to do colon hydrotherapy and I used to do, I used to call the back door to my nutrition, uh, to my energy work. Wow. Interesting. I, I never really told anyone that I did energy work because I was, I, I was afraid to tell people like, what are they going to think? I've had this, I felt this gift since I was a kid and I've always wow. tapped it on my own, but really kept it a secret for years. And people used to come to me and say, you know, I went somewhere else for colonics because they wanted to keep it a secret, but they can't because they're saying, but I never got the same colonic, like the way you give me colonics. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> I have secret. And I can't tell you. <laughs> And they're like, well, why does that happen? I said, because I do an energy clearing in your intestinal area. So I know exactly your emotions that we're releasing. I know exactly what's going on in your life, but I just don't say anything because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You're just releasing it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Zach, I will never go anywhere else again. Mm -hmm. And I just laugh, right? And I'm just like, mm -hmm. and then I say to them, do you mind if I give you some messages? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting because I love the fact that you do the whole food concept with it because exotonal alignment to me is also like a great old uh, expansion of chocolate clearing. Mm. It's a little deeper than that, but it still is for people to understand it. I find like everyone knows their chocolate, the invisible alignment from, you know, the sky to the earth. But I know the exotonal alignment is, is more expansive than that. I get it. But because you're clearing out their intestine and then clearing out basically um, all the way up to their to their small intestine from the ileum, that's the spot there, yeah, the ileum, ileum, is that the, from, right from um, your stomach to your intestines, I think it's the ileum, it's called, I can't remember off now. It's been a while since I last looked at my, my chart, my poo chart. But people hold on to so much fecal matter in their small intestine, their large intestine, all the way up to their stomach. Mm. And they're not realizing this. So I love the fact that you're, you're doing all this at one time. That's the beautiful yeah. part. For sure. Because you can eat the healthiest in the world, mm -hmm. but if your energy and emotions are not balanced, you're not even going to take in the nutrition. 
Exactly. I was going to say that to you. Yeah. Like you're either in a state of rest and digest or fight or flight. And mm -hmm. if you're constantly anxious and, you know, feeling imbalanced, you're not digesting and your body's not healing. Correct. Yeah. So true. I, yeah. It's about getting people in a state where their body can heal, facilitating their own healing magic by providing food that actually gives energy as opposed to food that's cutting off life force or depleting energy. It's food yeah. that gives energy to support their body and naturally healing themselves. So true. I always tell people when you're eating, if you're ever mad, and the only reason I knew this because I used to have this massive anger issue and I did hear my spirit guide say, well, I wouldn't eat that if I were you. You're just pissed off at the world right now. It's not going to digest properly. And I'd be like, I don't want to eat it. <laughs> I'm fighting with my spirit guides. I don't want to eat it anyways. And they're like, well, look at the way you're, and like, this is why I have this you know, thing going on. And I think I have a million friends out there and I really don't have that many, but I have four ones. <laughs> Spirits have been around for so long telling me what to do, right? And they mm -hmm. said, do never, never eat your food when you're in a state of stress, yep. anxiety, sadness, or anger, because the, it doesn't digest properly. Hallelujah. Thank you for mentioning that. That's really important. That's why I recommend to people to take some deep breaths, um, mm -hmm. and bless the food and then eat. Or if there's more clearing to be done, you know, journal it out, like, or give your body a break. Maybe your system doesn't even want food right then. Maybe it yeah. just is clearing. Maybe it just wants water. Yeah. Just wants water. Because it has that same, you know, I, I remember my friends were like, I'm starving. I'm like, dude, you just ate an hour ago. Drink some water. I don't want water. Your body's probably telling you you're thirsty, not hungry. Yeah. And I'm like, it's the same feeling. Thirst and hunger give you that same feeling. You just got to drink the water first. And if you still get it over and over, then eat the food. Very, very true. Very true. So how, how do you find your clients with the water? I guess, let's talk about water for a sec. Because water is, water is life, man. For sure. And a lot of people don't drink water. So what's your take on the water situation? Mm, definitely. You don't want to be drinking tap water. That's for sure. So ideally, you want to have filtered water. Uh, personally, I have a Berkey and love it. Uh, they also deliver spring water. Or you can even go to the springs yourself and fill up large glass bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, and blessing it, of course. So mm -hmm. what water are you actually are drinking even if it's like tap water with fluoride poison and whatever like at least bless it um, hopefully you can get some clean water because that's you know we're 70 percent water so it's kind of important but um you know blessing the water is huge uh if you've seen dr yamoto and the water crystals of what yeah. what it looks like before blessing or after blessing or what intention you infuse in it. So I'm really big on blessing water. Like I decorate my water machine with affirmations and crystals and like rocks from my cooking teacher or from my cottage or, you know, like I vibe it up. Love, give it love. Yeah, like my water right now is like a boss. Oh, amazing. So this is my water right now. It's like a boss. That's my mug that I love drinking. Yours is love is the key that opens the heart that's her water mine is like a boss and her is about love is the key that opens up your heart so <laughs> it's true you have to like you can't you know when I, when I host meditation sessions when i do group meditations i have bottles of water there and i give people a bottle when they leave and um, they say that's the best tasting water they've had i'm like well uh -huh. all the universe is blessing that water while you guys are in meditation of course it's the best water you drank that's amazing. It's so true. It makes a huge difference. Like that was, and you know, and when I was first bringing in the practice of blessing my food, you know, I'd always forget or I'd do it here and there. And, but once you got it down, you got it down. So that's now it's a habit where it's like nothing goes in my temple before it's blessed. Mm -hmm. Like until it's blessed, you know? So and it's even like journaling. I was resisting journaling and, you know, avoiding it. I knew I needed it, blah, blah, blah. And now it's like a non-negotiable. Every single day I do journaling. So That's once you, yeah, once you nail down those, those habits, you know, you can bring in other ones to bring down and just ground them. Yeah, I love that you say that. Because habits for some are hard to create, but it takes 21 days to start a habit, as science mm -hmm. says. I say it takes about 30 days to really nail it down because 21 days is getting you structured, but 30 days to say, I got this. 
So I'm a true believer in that. It took me, it took me like 30 days to get out of depression after two and a half years. So when people say it's hard to get out of depression, I'm like, listen, I wanted to scratch my face off. I was suicidal. I want to live. And when I woke up one day, bawling my eyes up, couldn't breathe, had anxiety. I couldn't actually even drink water. My mom had to give it to me in a straw. That's how bad I was. And this, I couldn't even drink it out of a straw. Um, and then, you know, within time, 30 days, I just kind of sat back and I said, okay, let's do this. 30 days, my life changed drastically. So it does take 21 days to create that habit, but 30 days to really let the debris, I always say like all that debris that we have in our mind that continues to flow to really leave. Even, you know, there was times I it was rewiring my mind because I learned some crazy techniques when I was channeling into spirit. And even at 60 days, these little thoughts kept on coming to me. So I was just like, where are you coming from? But when you rewire your mind and the newness, you don't have to do anything after that because it's, it's a natural automatic thing that your soul says, well, I don't know where you're coming from, but you don't belong here anymore. Whoop, sweeps mm -hmm. it the table. It's such a beautiful thing to create those habits. I love that. Yeah. So, true. so amazing. So amazing. Wow, there's so much to talk to you about. Let me see where we want to go with this because it's like, what is your daily routine? Mm -hmm. Beautiful question. So when I wake up in the morning, I write my dreams mm -hmm. and I always get very powerful insights from the dreams because I intend to. Before I sleep at night, I say, show me my dreams, what's blocking me? Show me my dreams. Who's the third person at my cooking retreat? Or like, and I'll get like a, vi a visual of a person and then I call them the next day and they're in. So I use my dreams to, you know, answer all my questions about life. <laughs> I love that. I do that too. Yeah. But when I call people, they don't respond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I dreamt that. I saw that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's so funny. Well, you know, all divine. Uh, so yeah, I write down all the, the things that happen in the dream and then I lead directly into some journaling mm. and first, you know, releasing anything or just processing anything. And my intention for the day is da da da. And then I write out as if my visions are already manifested. Like I'm so happy and grateful that da da da. And like, I get myself in the vibe of that and do some visualization and some self healing on myself. It's great to do breast massage. Um, you know, just loving touch of your body in whichever way feels aligned for you and you know watering plants doing oil pulling and tongue scraping doing movement for sure is a non-negotiable even if i'm like running super late i'll still make you know five minutes to just at least dance because uh, it really shakes out the energy of your body meditation sometimes i play the djembe the african drum yeah, um, yeah you know, setting the day, just setting the pace for the day. And uh, yeah, so that's my morning routine. In the evening, you know, winding down at night, I like to have a nice bedtime tea. I also start the morning with a herbal tea as well. I'm a big fan of herbal medicine, depending on what your body needs, if you need to, you know, relax the nervous system or cleanse any organs, whatever it is that you want. Uh, so at night, have a nice tea and just wind down. I like reflecting on the day, like, okay, Katie, how was your day today? And you know, what am I grateful for that happened and just feel good and sometimes draw some angel cards. Um, some people can do journaling at night. Personally, I do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, just wind down, like have a cushion between the work day. Because as an entrepreneur, you know, I'm working until always two yeah. to seven. It's like, yeah, there's always lots to do. Um, so I really need to have that cushion from the work day to the sleep. And that's the night routine. And it's, it's just so important for, for setting the space. I love the fact that you check in on how your day went. I love when I do that. It's like, okay, what yeah. was the best part of my day and what day could use improvements and what yeah. would I do tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I think that's extremely important. So that's, mm -hmm. I love, I love your routine. Me too. How long and do they you tap that to, to break that down and make it an everyday routine? Um, it always up levels. Yeah. So I rewrite my routines like every couple months. Oh, beautiful. Because mm -hmm. there's always new things that I want to bring in. Like there's always, we all have a next level of health. Mm -hmm. Like now that I've got down, every day I'm doing movement. Like 
pretty much non-negotiable. Now I want to, you know, move for longer. So I want to extend my workouts for longer. My other intention is to go to bed earlier. You know, that's my next level of health, longer workouts and earlier to bed, bringing in more breath work, doing facial massage. I want to do more of that. Oh, I also love doing face masks. I, I love, you know, doing like, nourishing beautifying things for my temple do you make the face masks out of food or are you using other face masks yeah Yeah. i make the face masks so i put um i put honey and Mm -hmm. or you could use coconut oil Uh, i love i love honey by beekeepers naturals because they harvest sustainably and i put in camu camu because it's really high in vitamin c Mm -hmm. and antioxidants um and then i put in some essential oils either i love the doTERRA ones there's a geranium or frankincense Mm -hmm. and then it up or even I use actually papaya like dried papaya mm-hmm. um, and I put that with honey if we were in the tropics I would just slather a whole raw papaya all over my body for sure but here there's like no good papayas so I just get the powder and mix it with honey <laughs> do the best um you saying papaya I was just in Costa Rica oh. and, uh, I was eating a papaya a day and oh my god the best so good oh Coming here and looking at like the fruit here, I'm just like, I feel so like deprived from nature living in North America. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know, but farmer's markets is where it's at because that's the local goodness. Like when you, that food is potent. That's yeah. another big thing that people can do, you know, to get real nourishment is actually go to a market and buy it directly from the farmer who yeah. literally picked it that day as opposed to it you know sitting on the shelves for weeks or being shipped across the planet like that's the magic it's potent it's so good it's so good and i followed your journey in costa rica and actually i remember when you went to puerto viejo and you're showing all this food and you're showing this place i was like and i think i sent you a message i'm like where are you like i'm in puerto viejo and i'm like i'm going there <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> because of you i went there just so you know that's so interesting wow and i went to every restaurant that you you showed and i was like oh yeah girl i ate this food too oh yeah girl i'm so happy to hear that i had no idea yeah i I remember i never knew you and i was like yo where are you (laughs) because i don't i will just if i want to know where you are i don't care who you are i want to know god i've been there the last four years in a row that place is magical that place is insane it's magical. It's so beautiful. It's magic. Yeah, it's amazing. So we're coming down to the end of our program here. And I, could, I know I could talk to you forever and ever and ever and we could do that. But I'm getting some questions that, you know, I want to ask you. Because yeah, everyone that's listening to this podcast, it could be like, well, like, I don't know if I could do a daily routine because I have kids and it must be nice to be single. You know, we find every excuse not to do things rather than like, I love the simple steps that you've given everyone just one by one, do it every day, just change it up. Like it, and sometimes if you miss your routine, guess what? Don't kill yourself over it. Just yeah. start up again. You know, there's 24 hours the next day too. But what would be a piece of advice you could give someone that just starting to get into their holisticness of health and nutrition and physical movement Mm -hmm. thank you so much for asking that it's really important so you know some days you may have time for like a full-blown two or three hour routine yay other days you may only have you know 10 minutes but could you not do one minute of journaling one minute of shaking it out and dancing you know one minute of just setting a powerful intention for the day one minute of meditation like you can compact it or you can switch it around like today, you know, my morning routine switched a little bit. So that's fine. I, I flowed with it. You know, sometimes you've got to make people food and, you know, so you can figure it out, but just do the best you can and, uh, and be gentle with yourself and have fun. Don't forget to have fun in this life journey. I know, right? Everyone forgets to have fun. I always, spirit always tells me, that. go out there and make people laugh. And I'm just like, people think I'm crazy as it is already. And now you're going to make me go out there and be a clown. I'm like, okay, your wish is my command. Like, and then they're, so to people, they're looking at me like, you're spiritual. And I'm just like, well, what's your definition of spirituality? That's a, that's a question right there. What's your definition of spirituality? Being connected. Mm. Feeling good. 
doing what we came here to do. I love that. But how about if those people, they, they, they're listening to single, but I don't know what I want to do. Be you. I know. Isn't it the easiest thing to do? <laughs> Just be. That's the answer to everything. That's what the mountains told me in Hawaii. Every life question I had, it was like, just be. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> laugh at that. And the reason I laugh at that, because here I was, I was in Panama 2017 of February. I went to this event, the tribal gathering. And it was a time where I, I just came out of depression maybe a year before that. And I heard, you need to go to this tribal gathering event in Panama. And this is when I ended up going to Puerto Viejo. And here I was in the middle of the jungle. No one could get a hold of you. I'm by myself. And I mean, this was secluded. There was no way of getting out unless you wanted to walk about a whole day to get to the main road. And even there, you're good luck if someone finds you. And uh, I met up with a spiritual teacher out there and, and I said something to her. She goes, just be. Mm. And I go, what? <laughs> She's like, just be. And I'm like, I am being, but I'm getting anxiety from just being. <laughs> she starts just looking at me like, okay, this girl's like next level, right? And she goes, do you know who you are? And I said, oh yeah, I know who I am. That's what's giving me anxiety of just being. Mm. So here I was, you know, 12 days camping. It was so beautiful. Just you, nature, and your tent. And... I should have listened to spirit, but I had so much anxiety the next day. I had to leave and I didn't really have to leave. I just had to deal with what I had to deal with. I just had to be, right. I got so tied up in a knot that I had to leave, mm. you know, and the ego is so powerful and the spirits watching going, remember the lesson we told you yesterday, just be, and I'm just like, I can't fucking be, I can't be ah! like, <laughs> going crazy. Right. Mm. Well, I left. I ended up going to the city in Panama. I took a shower and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go back now. Wow, nice. But I didn't go back because you can't go back. <laughs> it, takes, okay. it takes like six hours to get there <laughs> where yeah. it was. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so I ended up going back. And the lesson that I learned there was you needed to be even in that anxiety that you were sitting in and was coming to the surface. You needed to be through that. That's mm -hmm. what just be is, it, it said to me, right? Spirit was saying that to me. Mm -hmm. Never emotions coming up, just be in it. Stop mm -hmm. trying to put all these words to it. Stop trying to find a title for it. Stop trying to figure it all out. Just allow it to process through you. So so anyway, so this ended up being, um, I think it was like a month and a half trip. I ended up extending the trip another week. All these things mm -hmm. happened. Every time I would go through something, I'd be like, just be. Just, just be in it. So imagine me walking. Here I am bawling my eyes out, holding a knapsack. Something's happening. And all I, I could tell myself, just be, just be in it. Just be in it. Mm. I'm on the bus crying. Just be. I don't know why I'm crying. Just be. I'm like crying this thing beside me. Like, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Just be. If That's it's beautiful. coming up, there's a reason it's coming up. Just yeah. allow it to go through you. Just allow it to leave you. Yeah. Clear That's through it. Years, right? Just be. It's true. Even just, just be love. Mm -hmm. just be you just let it flow and you know that's the essence of the work is helping people become more of who they are so that they can just be mm -hmm. and just embody the divine essence and their soul and their purpose and just be <laughs> just just be i know so i tell my clients <laughs> guys just be and they're like oh we hate when you say those two words to us <laughs> i'm just like well Hate's a very powerful word, so you better just be in that state and wonder why you're saying that for. And they're like, oh, you know? So I get it. Just be. There's nothing that you have. You're not broken. Nope. And there's no new you. It's just a you that was always there, but is just, I always say, is blinded by the ego because you don't recognize. And I love that you said that. Just be and allow for the truth of you to come out. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. I love that you help people through that process and it's beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. So are you running any retreats at all? Of course, always. When's your next yeah. retreat? So I do cooking retreats in my home in Toronto. So okay. it's a full day of nourishment. You come in, you lie down and just totally relax and receive a scalp massage with aromatherapy and Reiki energy healing and drumming and just feel so good and nourished. And then we go to the kitchen 
in and we have some delicious fun and you get to taste your way through my shelves and cupboards and like learn how to make easy, easy, simple meals. Cause I'm all about keeping it simple and giving you tools so that, you know, you can use what you have in the kitchen as opposed to going to three different stores, picking up all random ingredients. No, let's use what you have and give you some basics so that you can easily put stuff together, versatile, you know, um so yeah love it in the kitchen and i love uh like people how excited they get when they realize actually how simple and easy it is and how good it tastes like that's gives me the most satisfaction in the entire world like it's because sometimes people think it's going to be difficult or i'm like eating grass all day or something but i'm eating like a king over here like i'm literally eating the best most delicious food ever and i just i want to share that with everyone i want the whole world to eat deliciously and nourish themselves and feel as good as possible. And so, so that's what the retreat is all about. That's amazing. So do you take out of towners as well if they want to come in? Of course. Okay. For Just sure. Out there that's from out of town if they want to come visit you. Yeah. And for anyone that's even further away, I do most of my sessions over Skype. Mm. So or for people feel more comfortable, but the video is a nice connection, you know. Yeah. So I can help people all over the universe. So if this vibes, you know, I'd love to, to awesome. help people feel good for sure. That's so amazing. Girl, thank you so, so much for being on this podcast. So this was like totally, I want to say hot, like fire. Cause that's what's coming to my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> like fire. I like. Yeah. Thank you so much. And for anyone that is interested in working with Katie, Guys, look at her socials. Everything's going to be in the show notes. Get in contact with her. Make some love in the kitchen. The orgasms are for real. They're not a joke. Your food is going to be pure love. The head massages, the axotonia alignment, it's purely expansion. I know it because I've done it. I, I do it with my clients as well, so I get it. I just don't have a title to anything because it's just, you know, the person that's giving you the healing is exactly the temple that's going to be produced within yourself. So check out the show notes, connect with Katie, I was going to say Christy, connect with Katie Christie. And uh, thank you for showing up today, listening to this podcast, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for now.